Good afternoon, everybody. We are here today on a very important occasion. It's a rundown to Indian Navy, which is going to celebrate its raising day on 4th of December. And here we have with us one of the biggest partners of Indian Navy in Make in India and one of the oldest shipyards of the country, Garden Reach Ship uh, Builders and Engineers, which is based out of Kolkata. And who better than the chairman, the CMD of the company, who is Commodore P.R. Harry, retired from the Indian Navy and the best man to talk to us about the Garden Reach Ship Builders and its association with the Indian Navy. Welcome, sir, to ADU's chat room. Thank you, ma'am. The outset, uh, thank you and the viewers for giving me this opportunity. As you rightly said, we are one of the oldest uh, shipyards of the nation. We are just 138 years young. And uh, since, you, since you mentioned about Armandar Bartha, uh, we and Armandar Bartha are uh, synonymous and our growth in this uh, particular aspect has been along with Indian Navy. Uh, we were taken over by the Ministry of Defense uh, during 1960. And during the 62 years of our association with the Indian Navy, we have delivered 107 warships, of which 70 have been for the Indian Navy. So, and these 70 warships reflect the Make in India aspirations or Make in India success of the Indian Navy. Currently, we are executing uh, orders for 15 warships for the Indian Navy. Four more are on the Alville and the 70 plus 15 plus four, that takes us to 89 ships, which is no mean number by any standards. And sir, it's also been 62 years since you became nationalized, sir. So uh, as a part of a defense PSU, uh, what is the you know movement which GRSC has seen as far as the various categories of ships go, sir? GRC started uh, in a modest fashion in uh, 1960, and we have to our credit the construction and delivery of the first indigenous warship of the nation, INS Ajay, in 1961. That is within a year, one year of us being taken over by the Government of India Ministry of Defense. Our product profile includes fast patrol vessels, water jet fast attack crafts, survey vessels, landing crafts utility, landing ship tank, fleet tanker, conventional frigates, missile corvettes, anti-submarine corvettes. And currently, we are constructing survey vessel large, anti-submarine shallow water crafts, and the advanced the stealth frigates. So our product profile is very, very wide. We have to our credit the capability to construct marine platforms ranging from a displacement of five ton, that is five ton boats to 24,600 ton fleet tanker. We are the only Indian shipyard to have built and delivered a fleet tanker. The first and only shipyard to have built and delivered survey vessels. Similarly, if you're coming about, if you're talking about exports, GRC has built and exported the first warship to a friendly foreign nation in 2014. So we have we have a rich legacy when it comes to warship building, and the results are here to see. And sir, uh, one thing which I wanted uh, to understand was that uh, when we talk of warships, we also talk of uh, you know giving it the fight component. So uh, the fight component, sir, is uh, a part of, uh, you know, you are no. in the final assembly, you are doing the fight component. So uh, the, I just wanted to understand from you that would it be uh, absolutely uh, correct to say that the component comes to you and uh, it is it is already there tailor made for the vessel which you have done or is it a general component and uh, you do it, sir? You fit it as per uh, your okay. needs. Okay, ma'am, uh, I would like to put this in a different perspective. Now, as far as warship building is concerned, it comprises of uh, four uh, components. That is float, move, fight, and survive. The float component is the hull of the ship and the seaworthiness. This is completely 100% indigenized 
as uh, starting from the steel to the deck fittings and so on. Coming to the next move, move generally comprises of the propulsion package, the power generation package, and whatsoever is required to move the ship safely in the marine environment. Here, some of the equipment, the major systems are either nominated as a single vendor nomination by the customer, that is the Navy or the Coast Guard, or they give us a pool of OEMs from whom we can choose the propulsion or power generation machinery. Now comes to the, I will, I will just sidestep the fight component, I'll move on to the survivability. Now in case of uh, survivability, it comes to life rafts, lifeboats, then the firefighting systems, and so on. Here, as a nation, we have achieved almost 80%, 85% of indigenization. And here again, many of these systems are nominated by the customer. Now coming to the fight component. This is an area where the government now is focusing on indigenization. Here, 100% of the fight component, that is the weapons and sensors, are nominated by the customer. And the Indian OEMs, I will just give an example, the Indian OEMs are, let us say, uh, BHCL, or the ordnance factories, erstwhile ordnance factory, one of the companies, or the electronics may be coming from Bharat Electronics, or HAL. So these are the few Indian firms capable of uh, uh, providing equipment and systems pertaining to the fight component, with several of the weapon systems continuing to be of import nature. As a nation, with the government giving complete focus towards indigenization, the nation, we be as part of the nation and being a shipbuilder, very confident that uh, in the coming years, the indigenization component in the fight uh, segment will improve. But as platform integrators, as platform uh, shipbuilders primarily being platform integrators, in the fight component, to answer your question, we rely on the nomination of these equipment and systems from the customer. Right, sir. And, uh, sir, is there a specific, uh, uh, you know, need when you're integrating, is there a specific requirement so that uh, the it's the fight component gets tailor-made for you? Or uh, is it, you know, is it that it's what is available in the market? Let's say there's a gun which is available by next, uh, has to be put into the ship. So it is that available gun we adjust onto the ship. That is that it? Uh, no, ma'am. The fight component, let us say, you, since you mentioned about a gun, the type and the make of the gun is nominated, it is identified and nominated by the customer. So this, uh, since again, since you are speaking about a gun, so that particular gun is procured by us from the OEM gun manufacturer, nominated by the customer, and we install it on board, and along with the OEM, we do the setting to work and the acceptance styles of the weapon system, gun or missile or, or torpedo, whatever is the weapon system. The integration is done by us along with the OEM, which is leading to the trials and acceptance by the customer finally. Right, sir, absolutely. And so for this, uh, one one very major factor which crops up here is that, uh, you know, when we have uh, high-end customers and we have high technological end uh, requirements, in that case, sir, what is the need of a indigenous R&D for you for as a shipbuilder? And how much do you invest into it when it comes to, you know, time and money? R&D, again, is a focus area for the shipyard. Uh, in, in our case, we have a very, very strong design house, perhaps one of the best in the industry, with over 100 uh, qualified design engineers whose dedicated function is to validate the existing designs and to produce new designs. We invest both in terms of resources and effort and cost in grooming and setting up a late, the best design house. Towards this, we have, we, have, we have capabilities such as the latest design softwares, state-of-the-art art virtual reality lab, along with the human capital, as I mentioned, 100 plus strong uh, human capital, which includes the best from the educational institutions of the country. In addition to design and new designs, we also invest in new technology. Here, we collaborate with the startups. Uh, for example, 
in development of green energy products or products which lead to automation of our processes or introduction of AI and robotics in our production processes. So in these segments also, we invest towards research and development. Yes, sir, absolutely, which, which means that it's a you know, task which is wholesome and gets carried on in the wholesome way. Uh, so, uh, you know, when we talk of R&D and we talk of investment into R&D, we also talk of, you know, and uh, a very major government uh, plan, which you yourself mentioned is Startup India. So uh, do you have your, uh, in your supply chain, startups which are very, very Navy focused and shipbuilding focused? Have you identified on them and is the supply chain very, very indigenous or you are still dependent on a very uh, big supply chain from outside the country? Okay, ma'am, uh, I'll just split this question into two parts. I'll first address the startup part and then I'll come on to the supply chain. Now, as far as the startups are concerned, there has been focused, there have been focused efforts on the government through various methods, including the IDEX uh, competitions and IDEX uh, uh, grooming. So we are also part of this ecosystem and we have tied up with uh, startups who are helping us in development, developing our uh, R&D projects. Now coming to the uh, supply chain. Now we have a, a see, shipbuilding unlike any other manufacturing industry is complex and the number of uh, components and thereon, the number of uh, MSMEs and the other vendors and the OEMs involved in construction of a ship are phenomenal. Now, we have a supply chain which ranges from major OEMs to very small MSMEs. Like for the major equipment and systems, as you, as you would infer, the, there are equipment OEMs of, uh, in national stature. And we also have an MSME chain, which is almost uh, 900 uh, in number, which is huge by any standards. And uh, since you asked, are we relying on them? Yes, we are very much relying on them. And as a matter of fact, for a platform integrator, our supply chain is our uh, vertebra. Yes, sir, absolutely. And sir, uh, very few people know that uh, you also have a very major uh, facility in Rachi, sir. Uh, what is that, sir? We have a diesel engine plant in uh, Ranchi, Jharkhand. And uh, this plant specializes in uh, assembly and testing and trials of uh, diesel engines. Uh, this plant was uh, set up almost uh, 30 years back. And this, we have a license agreement with one of the global uh, engine manufacturers, the MTU. And uh, under this uh, license agreement, we assemble the engines uh, of, of a particular make supply them for the Navy or Coast Guard as per the requirements. In addition to that, uh, this facility is also being utilized for uh, manufacture of one megawatt uh, diesel alternators for which we have got an order from the Indian Navy for the P-17 Alpha project. So this is a facility which is also being used as a production line for our uh, Bailey bridges, portable steel Bailey bridges. As you may be aware, one of uh, GRSC's business verticals is the portable steel bridges. For that, we have our uh, major facility at Kolkata. But uh, since our business in this segment was expanding, we decided to open a production line in Ranchi also. So to answer your question, our Ranchi plant is primarily used for assembly, testing, and trials of uh, diesel engines, manufacture of uh, diesel alternators for the P-17 Alpha project, and future orders uh, as and when they come. And third, for, as a production line for the portable steel bridges. So, so most of the ships have the MTU engine in that case? Uh, no, ma'am. It depends upon project to project. Uh, a large number of, it depends upon project to project. A large number of the Indian naval ships have uh, MTU make engines, especially the fast petrol vessels and the fast track craft, which are in huge de demand, both by the Navy and the Coast Guard, where the MTU make engines are used. So, sir, at the moment, what is the backlog like for Indian Navy and for the Indian Coast Guard? Of course, I'll also ask you about it. No backlog in terms of uh, my order book. Number or, of ships. Uh, okay. I'm first uh, asking right... you the number of ships, sir. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, right now, as you may be aware, Navy is constructing 41 warships. Of these 41 warships, 
39 are being built by Indian shipyards. Of this 39, of this 39, 15 are being build, built at JRSC. Great. These 15, these 15 are at various stages of construction, and uh, the 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 delivery of these ships will commence from the next financial year. And as per the present uh, delivery schedule, these 15 will be delivered by FY27, the first half of FY27. All of them, sir. All of them. All 15. Wonderful. So that is that's that's it seems very it's wonderful actually to hear such a thing because then you know it's not very far off. So which means that all off, the yes. backlog which the navy has and the the requirement and the gaps in the navy get fulfilled very soon, which means that so. And Absolutely. sir, uh, Coast Guard is another arm which is which I've seen that you really have a great association with also. So uh, what is their backlog of uh, shipbuilding like, sir? Uh, Coast Guard, uh, right now, we uh, just to again give you a little background, we have, uh, since we have delivered 105 warships for Indian Navy and Coast Guard, of that, as I mentioned, 70 have been delivered to the Indian Navy and 35 ships we have delivered to the Indian Coast Guard. Uh, the last, the current project that we are executing is a five ship uh, fast petrol vessel project, of which four ships have been already delivered and the, uh, the fifth ship is in the final stages of outfitting and we intend delivering the ship in a couple of months from now. So that will complete our uh, projects for the current projects for the Indian Coast Guard. And we are eagerly looking forward to more orders from the Indian Coast Guard in the coming years. And so uh, previously when you were speaking, you were also speaking about export orders. So uh, is export, because GRSE is visible everywhere, there is a defense show, there's a naval show. So which means that we have a very major marketing strategy which you have for GRSE for the international clients. So what is it like, sir? Which are the areas uh, geographically which you have targeted, which uh, also, you know, because there are, as far as, uh, you know, we all know that there are European shipyards which are very popular, but then probably you would be a much better and a cheaper option when it comes to the third world nations. So what is the plan like which uh, you have, sir? Coming to exports, uh, as I had mentioned uh, earlier during the course of this interaction, that uh, we delivered the first uh, warship for export to Mauritius back, way back in 2014. And uh, seven years down the line, that is last year, we delivered another uh, fast petrol vessel to the government of Seychelles. Currently, we are executing two projects, one for a Caribbean island, the Guyana, Government of Cooperative Republic of Guyana, an ocean-going passenger come ferry vessel, and a small project of uh, petrol boats, six petrol boats for the government of Bangladesh. Now, as a strategy, one, as a strategy that JRC has adopted, and second, with the kind of thrust that the current government has given on exports, we have uh, targeted uh, certain uh, areas with uh, market potential, uh, especially in the Indian Ocean region, both for commercial ships as well as warships. As a part of our strategy, we have engaged uh, marketing representatives, our representatives in few of these nations. And uh, I'm very confident that the results of these, uh, these have started very recently. The results will be seen in the coming few years. That, that's the best I can say at this moment. And we are, we are, we are looking for a breakthrough into the commercial shipbuilding segment uh, that will give us a head start, especially in the European nations. As you rightly said, as far as expertise is concerned and the cost is concerned, uh, we, we would stand at an advantage with any other shipbuilder in India or uh, our competing nations. Right, sir. And uh, so just to uh, also understand that, I, uh, has GRAC been into commercial shipbuilding or uh, this was the first time you did it or have you earlier also done it? GRAC has been in this uh, business earlier. Uh, we took a break. We took a sabbatical. We took a break. We focused on uh, warship building. We thought, uh, okay. now, why not get back to commercial shipbuilding also because that is an attractive uh, vertical. So... To answer your question, yes, we were there in uh, commercial shipbuilding. We took a break. We got back with a, a, a passenger vessel for the government of Guyana. Again, one through a competitive bidding uh, process. 
confident of uh, better results uh, in future. Yes, absolutely, sir. And uh, yeah. when we uh, want to continue talking about it, there's one very major factor which any defense shipyard has and would always like to have is uh, building of a submarine. Now, how far is GRSE from that? Ma'am, I, I just uh, very recently, we had a press conference uh, at a, uh, another venue. That's why we missed you at another venue where uh, one of the friends from the media asked the, exactly the same question. So I give an example. Uh, you could be a heart surgeon. Uh, Chaitali could be a pediatrician. I could be a, an ophthalmologist. Let the specialization remain. Submarine building is a very niche area which where the where the expertise developed over years and years grsc speciality is warship building and shipbuilding i have surface ship building i'll put it like that surface ship building so we are we are good and the best where in our area of operations so with the kind of uh, investment in terms investment and the in, in terms of development of that expertise over decades at this juncture, we are not planning to look at uh, submarine building or submarine repairs. In India, there are two shipyards, uh, actually two and a half shipyards, two shipyards who have got full-fledged capability in submarine construction. That is a Mazagan Dock, Sainzusan shipyard plus LNT uh, on the periphery. So with these three entities having developed the capability to build submarines, it is best that they continue to nurture that expertise. This is our view. Absolutely, absolutely wonderful of you because, you know, normally uh, nobody would have ever given this example, you know, that, uh, you know, we, okay, this is your forte to do it. This is my forte, so it should remain mine. I think it's wonderful. So it, it gives you an absolute straight cut out uh, thought about expanding your business on one lines. And uh, also, sir, when uh, we talk about these vessels, uh, we, which you are building, uh, you just spoke about refitting. Now, does a lot of refit work come to GRSE, sir? Again, uh, uh, we started uh, taking, because refit is one area where the turnaround time is very fast. So towards providing impetus to ship repairs, uh, refit and repairs, uh, we had, uh, we have, we have, we have acquired uh, three uh, dry docks from the Kolkata Port Trust on long-term lease basis, end of last year, last December, we concluded the contract. And uh, over the last 11 months, uh, we almost had 100% occupancy of these dry docks. And we have concluded the uh, refits on competitive bidding, the, the refits that we won on competitive bidding from uh, Indian Coast Guard, uh, for Indian Coast Guard ships. So again, uh, if you ask me, as far as refit and repairs are concerned, we are at a stage of a modest beginning with very ambitious plans because we already invested both uh, human resources and uh, as a strategy we have acquired these uh, docks and and we are we are bidding aggressively for the refits of uh, indian coast guard for commercial ships and for naval ships as and when they are due i see growth in this area in the next three to five years and sir uh, uh, we move towards the end of the interview the last my last two questions sir so my question now would be to you, uh, I think it's obviously in public domain, but uh, I really would like to understand that what is you, you have always been a profit making shipyard. So what is the backlog when it comes to financial terms at the moment, sir? As far as the, our financial results, I will just give you a glimpse of our financial results. Of course, it is available in the, being a listed company, it is available in the open domain. Uh, we ended the financial year uh, 22 on a very high note, having um, recorded our highest ever uh, revenue from operations. Of course, it's a modest 1758 uh, crores, but that has been our highest. We started the financial year again on a positive note with our Q1 performance. Uh, if you take independently, the highest ever, and if you compare with Q1 of uh, 22, again, good. We have maintained the, we have sustained that tempo even during the Q2. And uh, if, you're, if you're taking the half year ending 30th September, our uh, revenue from operation stands at 1,262 crores. Our uh, 
PAT is at 109 crores. Both very encouraging. And with our, uh, with our uh, order book position, the project maturity level, I'm very confident of maintaining the same tempo in the second half of the year, or the ongoing half of the year also. That actually very nice. Sir, so we have Chetali with us, who's our Bureau Chief sir, for Europe and Middle East. And uh, at the moment, she's in India. Chetali, would you have a question you have in mind for uh, the CMD here? Uh, sir, earlier also I had asked the previous CMD, anything, I mean, like I come from a Mediterranean region. I live in Cyprus and uh, recently I've just, uh, I'm staying in India for some time. I always, there, there is a large potential in that region for shipbuilding because it's a very much export import area and etc. So uh, is, is GRC have, uh, has looked for that region like you have been looking for the South Pacific and Southeast region, India, even Europe, but is there any plans, are there any plans for the Mediterranean region? Very much, uh, very much, yes. As uh, ma'am had uh, asked earlier, uh, she had asked a question about uh, commercial shipbuilding. And uh, my answer was that, yes, we were in uh, commercial shipbuilding in a reasonably big way earlier. We had taken a break, and now we are back into commercial shipbuilding again. We are testing the waters as of now. Uh, the first project is about to be completed, and we will be definitely looking forward for opportunities not only in the Mediterranean region, but in the other areas of interest also, uh, uh, specifically in commercial uh, shipbuilding. Actually, recently, a lot of uh, business talks which are going on between the Mediterranean countries and India. So don't you think it's a very uh, lucrative time to uh, jump into the sea? Uh, jump into the sea, of course, with a life raft, because as I said, I'm <laughs> touching the waters. Right. So, okay. <laughs> It's uh, very true, sir. Absolutely. Thank but you so much, sir. Thanks, thanks so for answering. Much. Not life raft, not life raft, right jacket. Sorry. My, yes, my, life, my jackets. Life, life jacket. Life jacket. Yes, life jacket. Life jacket. Right, Absolutely, sir. sir. And, sir, uh, you know, you have been on the other side of the fence also since you are from the Indian Navy. And you, you, who best but a person who's seen both the sides, how would you plan as the CMD of GRSC your next five years? And if there is a long-term plan which one has, which you will begin, somebody else might, else might follow it up after 20 years, but there is a plan which is there. So uh, with, a, with a user perspective, uh, what could be the plans or what could be the pitchings you could do for the Indian Navy and the Indian Coast Guard, sir? Okay. We have, a, as a shipyard, we have a very, very, I'll again answer this in two parts. Uh, first, I'll just take Navy out of the equation. I'll just talk about the shipyard, then I'll come back to the Navy. As a shipyard, we have a very, very, very clear, crystal clear vision. Uh, today, we are a Miniratna Category 1 Schedule B company. The vision of, and, and uh, considering the present order book, the orders which are likely to be uh, coming to us, that means orders on the anvil, and our execution plan, we are good to pitch for a Schedule A status. So our first milestone would be to attain a Schedule A status because that will give us the kind of visibility and the recognition that we feel we deserve. And as a long-term vision, while our vision statement has to be recognized as a global leader in warship building, that needs to be attached with a tag we aspire to become a Navratna company in a decade from now. That's what I would like to leave for my successor in the future. And this vision broken down to components which are achievable, tough but achievable, has been percolated to all my team members. Coming back to the Navy and the Coast Guard, both the Navy and the Coast Guard are aspiring to be 200 plus strong, to be having 200 plus strong uh, fleet by 2025 and 27 respectively. This is an ambitious plan. This is a very ambitious plan. But considering the shipbuilding prowess uh, of the Indian shipyards, if you take the four different shipyards plus the Cochin shipyard plus Lassen and Tubro and a couple of other private players, 
the capability and the capacity of the Indian shipyards is adequate to meet the aspirations of the Navy. And that is where, as a shipyard who has provided maximum number of ships to the Indian Navy, ranging from water jet fast attack crafts to fleet tankers, we feel we have very, very strong role to play. Right, sir. So thank you very much. It was just so wonderful speaking with you. And I think, you know, it really gives us an idea. We've been, you know, all the time covering GRAC, signing this MOU, signing that MOU. It's been very active for the last one month now. And we really thought that we would want to know what is happening on that front from the horse's mouth. So thank you very much for giving us your time. I know how busy you are and how busy to get you, you know, at this time of the year. Thank you so much, sir. And we really hope and wish GRSE and you all the best for a very, very nice and upcoming future, sir. So hats off to GRSE's role in Make in India and in creating a great naval force. We've all wanted to see India have, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. My pleasure interacting with you both. Thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. We are here today on a very important occasion. It's a rundown to Indian Navy, which is going to celebrate its raising day on 4th of December. And here we have with us one of the biggest partners of Indian Navy in Make in India and one of the oldest shipyards of the country, Garden Reach Ship Builders and Engineers, which is based out of Kolkata. And who better than the chairman? the CMD of the company, who is Commodore P.R. Harry, retired from the Indian Navy and the best man to talk to us about the Garden Reach Shipbuilders and its association with the Indian Navy. Welcome, sir, to ADU's chat room. Thank you, ma'am.